Hello everyone, I'm Pacific the Casual Gamer, and riding off the back of the encampments video, I'm going to be talking about whether or not you should go to war in Civilization VI. Now, in every Civilization game, period, except for maybe Revolution, if you want to call it that, it is extremely beneficial to go to war with someone, unless you're Gandhi, in some games. War just is amazing, especially in Civilization III. In Civ III, it's awesome. Like, you go to war with someone, you get all their land, and then you can settle like in the middle of it, and you have sometimes areas that no one's gonna settle, so you settle. And it overall provides you with a civilization that's twice as big as a normal Civ. And then you conquer another one that's three times as big as a normal Civ. But I feel like in Civilization VI, it can be a little bit different, and that's because of the way that culture works and tourism and science. See, in Civ VI, science victories are a little bit cheaper to build than, you, than in previous games. I think, I never really went for one in Civ V, so I don't remember, but in Civ VI, all you gotta do is launch five spaceships. You have to build spaceports to do it, but that's really all you gotta do is launch five spaceships. And you win. Now in culture, you gotta generate a lot of culture and a lot of tourism, which is, like, when you do the macro, it's really, really brutal to the other people if you're doing that culture victory. It's scary. But all of these things, except for science, require land. So it is my opinion that even though Civ 6 is, I would say, a little bit easier to do anything really, including win the science and culture, and religion, and even war, I think that you should at least conquer your neighbor in Civilization 6. The main fact of it is, is that in Civilization games, the one thing that you need the most of is cities. You need lots of cities. Even in Civ 6, you can only build so many wonders. And if you're building wonders and someone builds an army, they can go to war with you. You gotta swap to building the army and they get to swap to building the wonders. It's very simple. You need a lot of cities. And unless you get a lucky spawn where you can build aggressively towards someone, like you start building cities towards them and then build it behind you, you're, you gotta go to war with someone. I noticed this in, it is a very good example of this in a game I'm, where I'm playing as the Zulu. Now the Zulu are generally warlike, so of course I'm gonna go to war. But I have, like it's pretty early on in the game at this point in the Zulu game, and I have two cities. Everyone else has three because I put it on Emperor. And I conquered Germany, right? Now what happens when you conquer, when I conquer Germany is two things. One is I have an experienced army. And two is now I have three cities and I captured a part of the map where I can settle behind me and no one's gonna go for it. Except for eventually this other neighbor, Japan, went for a little piece of pretty bad land. But I just don't have to compete with Germany anymore for settling cities. And I have five cities, which means I can produce twice as many settlers now. And that's the key thing, is I can make more settlers, especially early game. And then I have this experienced army, so there is another neighbor next to me, and I just declared war on them and destroyed them. And then at this point, you know, it was like early game, I think I have like musketmen or something like that. Musketmen and knights. That's like my army comp, and I'm Zulu and I'm in peace, right? So like, it's mid game, and I already have, the, I'm the size of like three or four civilizations. And it's like, no one can stop me, because now I'm gonna technologically be ahead of everyone else, I'm gonna culturally be ahead of everyone else, economically, economically, I just build up my economy, I'm ahead of everyone else. And unless everyone else teams up, which, in a player game, I could see that happening. AI, not so much. I win. Like, it's like Monopoly, where you know early on you're gonna win, because you're conquering everyone, right? And you just have to figure out how to conquer every single person. And I think that 
In Civ 6, they made it so you don't have to conquer everyone to win. But if you conquer your neighbor, you are put at an advantage. Right? Is if you're the biggest like there's a problem in a lot of civilization games where if you're the biggest civilization, you win. Like, that is a default in every civilization game. And I think that in Civ 6 it is the exact same way. Where if you are the biggest Civ, you win. And that usually happens to me. If I don't try to win, the biggest Civ wins. Every time. Well, 99% of the time. And that is why I think you should at least go to war with your neighbor in Civ 6 and conquer them. And maybe their neighbor. You don't have to conquer everyone, but make your Civ pretty big. I would love to know what you guys think about this in the comments below. Do you think it's good or bad that in Civilization, you usually always need to go to war? I would like to know that. I feel like, personally, it's a mixed bag. I feel like it's good because, you know, then you kind of have to take risks and piss someone off to win, but I think it's bad because it limits you to having to do that playstyle, and it can make the game redundant sometimes because you're researching the same text in a row every time. So, I'm Pacific the Casual Gamer. I suck just as bad as you do at video games, and I will see you in the next episode, stream, vlog, or steam it post of whatever I decide to make.